and and uh, and so um, I think uh, we could uh, we could um, think that the Dipartimento now there is a big polemic without any sense about the word Dipartimento. So I, I I would like to spend some words about it. Uh, because many times uh, I was, uh, no, these are not, uh, I published these canzonas for uh, Armando Carideo um, editions, uh, so in Levante, uh, not so, this direction. And uh, um, these are 25 canzonas and 48 were organ verses in basso continuo. Uh, this title was decided by me because uh, you know that Bernardo Pasquini, the other Great mm. Partimento master, great Partimento master, because we still preserve Partimentos by him, because Partimento was normal from from the basso continuo age, general, general bass type, till Puccini, till till, till later, so, till till uh, the fifties. So, so this was a normal practice in all Europe, and we speak we will speak maybe about it also in the Romantic era. I have here one of the most important uh, Partimento treatise, Harmonie Pratique for the Paris Conservatory, that, uh, written by Panseron. Panseron was a student in Bologna of Padre Mattei, student of, of Padre Martini, of course. So, uh, and was a very friend in Paris, and not only in Paris, but uh, of Rossini, also a, 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 an Enkelschüler in German. I don't know in English, a, a pupil of pupil of Padre mm. Martini. So uh, Rossini was very, he knows, he, he is considering himself like a student of a student of Padre Martini. He told through the words of a, a Parisian crit, crit, critician after the, the Petit Messonnel first performance, he told a, a, a little anecdote about uh, the fact he didn't study enough counterpoint under Padre Mattei. Mm. But uh, there is uh, this uh, little, uh, little anecdote, very nice, uh, and he told, but I told Padre Mattei, one day, dear father, I will show you when I will have time to write things for myself and not to live, so to do operas, uh, I will show to you and to the world that I'm a worth student of the Padre Martini School. So this was, uh, of course, the Petit Messo Lenel. That is a Bolognese mess mixed to the influences of Bach. That was a, a, a Rossini was a Bach fan, a, a big Bach, Bach fan. And, uh, and uh, of, of Beethoven, of Mozart, Haydn, this always because he was the Tedeschino called in Bologna, the Tedeschain. Padre Mattei called him a little bit uh, in a negative sense, I think, for Padre Mattei. Uh, Rossini has a Tedeschino, so uh, a little German, no? a, a imitator <laughs> of Haydn and Mozart, of course. But uh, later Rossini discovered uh, Bach and Beethoven, of course, uh, and, uh, and he was a Bach fan. He told it to Ferdinand Hitler, to Richard Wagner. He told him to, to, uh, to other Germans, uh, Austrian composers. And when... Uh, when uh, um, Somebody came to Bologna to visit him. There was a, uh, they were surprised that he knew Bach, but for sure you, he knew Bach already as a student because during his nights he, he spent his nights in the Padre Mattei ho home, where all the Padre Martini library was in that moment because Napoleon closed the, the, the monasteries. So all the mm. library of Martini was taken by Padre Mattei in his apartment, where mm. he lived uh, with the mother, the old mother, and Rossini also don't need that later. They uh, they spend the night to to play cards with the mother of Padre Mattei, but Rossini in some in some uh, souvenirs uh, written by by a friend from Lugo told that uh, he spent all the night with the ca candles. To learn things in the historical library, in the old stuffs of Padre Martini, and he told to this friend, "My favorite music is the Latin sacred music." They think I'm the light Rossini, but I studied a lot. <laughs> he told this in the last part years mm. of his life. So, 
when he was more depressed, depressive, yeah. more and also more deep. But he was a genius, probably an improviser, incredible improviser. We know that in Naples, he improvised the uh, melodrama with uh, singing and playing uh, piano uh, together, improvising uh, for hours. So, so uh, these uh, <laughs> are fruits of the improvisation uh, tradition that is uh, what we call in some way Partimento. What is Partimento? Partimento is a southern Italian word, maybe not so southern, but it was used by Montalbano, for example, uh, in order to, 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 in, to indicate, to call the basso continuo. So the Partimento for the organ, the, the, the base part for organ, when they they had Einzelstimmen, so the, the the singular part of, of the, the, the sonato or motet, the partimento for the organ was this that in Venice, in North Italy, they called it for el basso generale for the organ or basso continuo for the organ. So the, the, in the south, partimento is the part, partimento, extracted from the score of the continuo, so basso seguente. Because uh, uh, and we speak a little bit now about basso seguente uh, for these canzonas. So these canzonas are completely different from what we think uh, Partimento is in the 18th century. Uh, here we have uh, the real counterpoint, uh, the, 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 the last tradition of the Italian Renaissance counterpoint uh, after Frescobaldi. In instrumental style, in, in instrumental keyboard style, in, for improvisation, for didactical reasons, but 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 we have still a very deep counterpoint under, understanding, and mm -hmm. also requirement. Your uh, the organist who plays this music uh, has to know very good the the, the post Zarlino counterpoint rules. They have not, they have not anything to do with the uh, regola dell'ottava, with the ottava, uh, with the scala harmonizzata, which are in Italian, eh? harmonized scale. Uh, this is an understanding of contrapunt before the, the the fixing of the tonal system and tonal system. What is uh, is a very simple thing. Is uh, we have uh, eight church modes, tones modes. But the same, and uh, and uh, who became uh, that became twelve. Glareanus uh, told uh, in the hand of, uh, if I don't make mistake, in the hand of fifteenth uh, uh, century. From fifty hundred years, uh, musicians are using more than eight tones, so twelve. And so we have twelve tones. We have four new tones. Uh, the ninth, the tenth, the eleventh, and the twelfth. And the ninth and tenth, as finale, they have A, A, of German, in German. So La in modern Italian. And the, the eleventh and twelfth, twelfth, they have C, Do in Italian, C of uh, uh, And and uh, this uh, we know that Fuchs in the Gradus ad Parnassum is a, a very important, a fundamental. Contrapoint treatise for the Stilus Antiquus, the, the neo palestrinian way of the late Baroque era, age. So, uh, and he fixed the five species of contrapoint, no? the four species of the florid contrapoint. Uh, all this was taken by Padre Martini completely, and also in, 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 from the Naples school, of course. And then Cherubini, that is a, a fruit of Sarti, of the Bologna school. No? Bologna and also Padua school. We will speak about Padua a little bit, but uh, about the degrees harmony and these things, Ramosi. But 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 uh, the, the the Fuchs tell we have six modes, six tones, because he is not any more interested in the difference between authentic mode and the plagal mode. So the the one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, and the two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. This is not. Is not any more. Is, is not no more important for 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 the late Baroque tonal understatement, also contrapuntal understatement. 
understanding. So what ha happens? Uh, that uh, these six uh, tones, finalis D, finalis E, F, G, A, and C, of these six uh, common tones, the first time I have written about it in, the, uh, in, the, in my dictionary article about uh, Antonio Valente, the Naples organist of the Renaissance, uh, I have written that in the organ versets uh, by Valente, we have for the first time, 100 years before Fuchs, more than 100 years, 120 years before then Fuchs, uh, the, the a statement for the six common church tones that are the, the union between authentic and plugin. The last two inv invented or used, the A, became the minor, the C became the major. So the, the newest are the only to remain in the music. <laughs> so, this is the, so which is the difference between modal system and tonal system? There is no difference. This told me my historical counterpoint professor, uh, really a very, uh, a, a, a very prolific composer in, in Baroque, and not only in Baroque, that is Giorgio Pacchioni, who is Giorgio Pacchioni. He told me there is no different. The, the, there are fashion differences. There is, a, 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 of course, a progress, a progress or a change in the tastes in the fashions of the composition. But in general, the, the late Renaissance uh, twelve tone system is more complex. Is more complicated. Is more because we have more more different effects from the to church modes. But after we have only two tones, a minor and major, and this is too few for, for the variety human being request. And what happens? We have a new possibility, the free modulation. That, and this is connected mm -hmm. with temperament problem, of course. So uh, when in, in, in the develop, to the origin, to the Greek origins, so the equal temperament, that it was the first and it's the best temperament possible, of course. And this was, I have written recently for a recording, I did uh, together Lina Turbonet, a, a Spanish violinist, she's a professor in Weimar of Baroque violin. She's a virtuoso violin player, modern Baroque, and we recorded the Bach concert for Glossa, and I played basso continuo at the harpsichord, but, uh, um, and I decided to tune harpsichord equal. In Bach, I always tune harpsichord and clavichord equal. And uh, all these, uh, these problems of Rosetta, all the, these are completely, I think, uh, misunderstanding, because uh, uh, there are so many sources, uh, and clearly, also, many scholars have told the same than me, but uh, now in the early music world, uh, I, I'm a member, a, a little bit uh, an artist maybe, but a member of the early music world in some, in some way, but, uh, but uh, uh, a little bit and maybe not, not, not uh, in my way of independently, but, uh, but uh, of course. Uh, a maverick. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, I, uh, but I remember also Gustav Leonard recorded uh, Bach mm -hmm. in equal temperament. Because for in a period we was clear that that Bach was the rich point of equal temperament. That was a long Roman Baroque Jesuit, and this Patrizio Barbieri, our Italian most important tuning and temperament scholar, he wrote a beautiful article about the equal temperament in the Frescobaldi Rome age. And uh, and and uh, and uh, Patrizio Barbieri showed the famous thing that first of all he wanted to, to tune organ equal, and the organ is of course the less uh, the, the instrument who uh, that less uh, where the temperament the equal temperament is uh, dangerous because we have long notes and the, the equal temperament is all. Untuned, no? <laughs> everything is untuned. The third, the sixth, the fifth, and the fifth. 
Uh, so, uh, but uh, Frescobaldi wanted to tune the organ of San Lorenzo in Damaso equal, but they didn't permit, because the, the church was conservative, and musicians, big musicians, great musicians, less. What happened, the same was in, in Germany, there was a Lutheran, Lutheran reform, and uh, what uh, I'm Lutheran personally, you know, we discussed about uh, it uh, many times, and uh, and uh, uh, I'm uh, my view is Lutheran, and uh, there is a reformation of church in sense of early church, and what happens that uh, there is maybe in German we could see a little bit uh, this is provocative, but I think correct. Um, Let's hear it. Um, uh, we could uh, see the not only the music, but the, in some way, until a moment, that is Sturm und Drang, after is different, but bet between Luther, Luther and uh, to Bach, to Bach not only, but uh, to this age, more or less, Germany wants to imitate Italy, and uh, I want to be better than Italy, in an Italian sense of the word. So, what happens? Luther tells the Pope uh, is mistaken. We have the real early church. Rome is super, is schismatic. Schismatic? How is it in English? Schism? Schism or schism? I, I guess, know you know, happens. schism, I would say. Yeah. Schismatic. Uh, what happens in, in the music of, of after Schutz? Schutz wrote that Italy is the real school of every music. And he went twice to Venice. He was friend with Monteverdi. He was influenced uh, by, by Alessandro Grandi, by Trabacci, the motets by Trabacci, the motets by Maione, uh, were, were ordered by Schutz. And the, the reaction, the musical reaction by Schutz is the Geistliche Musik. These are completely Na Napolitan motets in, with Lutheran uh, clothes. No? Lutheran texts, but the texts are from Lutheran Bible, so are biblical. Uh, some part of of Schutz production is Latin. Latin is the language of church also for Lutheran. The Missa, Iria Gloria, Credo, Sanctus, Agnus, or Agnus, is always the fundamental of liturgy of Lutheran. The real presence in the sacrament is, of course, very very important, fundamental for Luther. Luther is against the Calvinist, much more than against the, the Roman, always with the Pope against Calvin. And Bach, on his, in his library, had a very important text, Lutherismus or the anti-Calvinism. So uh, it was strong for Bach. In Curtin, Bach, the, the prince, was, was a Calvinist, but Bach had not to do with church music, because uh, uh, he, he was very friend uh, with in, in friend relations with the prince, but uh, they are differently Christian. No? So what happens in, in German music? They want to make better than Italian, like in religion. No? And uh, so what happens? Jesuits in Rome, Spanish Jesuit, Bohemian Jesuit, started to to diffuse is correct diffuse. sorry for my english uh, the no your english is great e e equal equal temperament and the, but where was possible to arrive to it uh, in a world that is that has a, something in direction of freedom more than the liberate uh, more liberal in some way so also counterpoint the german Late 17th century counterpoint, the Thuringian motets, the Bach, when Bach was a child, what he, he found in Thuringia, in Saxony, is different from the Italian didactical system uh, of the conservatories in Naples or of Bologna school. So the Bologna school is much before Padre Martin, of course, is a singing school, but singing counterpoint keyboard and the composition of the same, the same professor. So um, there's also violin, of course, violin, and a way to accompany the bass, uh, the right hand, the violin, 
the accompaniment, the accompaniment is not the artists who accompany the voices, but the voices are historically intended the accompaniment of the bass. The, the, every, every part on the bass in the basso continuo age, also in Brahms, are accompaniment of, of the bass. And this is the most, when we call partimento in south, is the same word, partimento is basso continuo, but partimento in sense of solistic keyboard exercise, so a basso continuo not written primarily to play with singing, with singers or with a violinist, or, but alone. The, is partimento in south, but in north, Cristoi, Bolognese school, uh, in, in Vienna, a lot of the titles, the names are bassetti, so little basses, or better, esercizi per l'accompagnamento. And here, the dictionaries, uh, the, the terminology of music theory, of didact didactical, didactical, sorry, uh, in, uh, my German is better than. English, but, uh, didactic or didactic, or I don't remember. The no, point. it's good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, the accompaniment, the accompaniment is the right hand. It's not the bass. So esercizi in order to accompany is to, to accompany the bass. So every part on the bass intended by figures or not figures. These are this is the accompaniment. So the, uh, in the the same, uh, you can imagine sonata for the pianoforte with accompaniment of violin, Mozart. So the, the, the keyboard remains the main thing. Today, in the early music world, we have completely forget uh, this real sense. The harpsichord is the last instrument, not in front, but uh, and less sounding better is no? and so uh, but, uh, but this was not uh, because article was the conducting instrument why because with the plucking is very clear like now the baton no? and and uh, this uh, with uh, the right hand chords or or diminutions you, you can keep the orchestra in the tempo of the conductor and 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 to accompany the voices in this case but all the composition, the voices are the accompaniment of the bass. So what happens in the improvisation, I think? You can have a melodic idea, of course, and to give a bass under it. This is the system Bach used in the Lutheran, used the, the, the chorals with different basses. You, you have a cantus firmus of a Lutheran liturgical choral, very similar, I think, in principle to the Gregorian choral. It's the same only is more modern than Gregorian and sometimes more tonal, more tonal, but, but they did also with uh, Gregorian hymns, Veni Creator Spiritus, there is the, the same translated in German choral and you use it like Gregorian and the Catholic in German did the same and not only in German, but uh, I have here very interesting books, uh, dissertations, uh, very rare to find about the accompaniment at the organ of the Gregorian choral in the in the Baroque South German lands, and also in Italy, also in Poland, also in France, there was so Gregorian was always accompanied in Britain. In Italy, there was more tradition to alternate the solo singing, but also this is is to to to, to, is to investigate better because maybe they alternated a Gregorian accompanying to a cantus figuralis, uh, so with, with motet, with mass. But so in general, uh, in, the, in this, in this, in this 16th century, part, uh, 17th century partimentos, like these canzonas, uh, we have still a very, as much as possible, uh, strong counterpoint texture. And the composer, anonymous composer, it's very interesting. You will see now in the in the scrolling score. Uh, I I think I thank a lot uh, Nick because he helped me with the, with the scrolling oh, score. Oh my, uh, my pleasure! And, and, it was a lot of and, fun. 
you will see C A T, and this is cantus altus tenor. So the composer indicates to the organist how, where to to put in which voice to put the the subject of the fugue, and uh, this system uh, was followed, for example, in the Partimento Fugues by Handel. Like Kirchhoff, student together with Kirchhoff, in the same moment, student under Sachhoff, and we will see later some partimentos by by Kirchhoff. And 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 so the same system of these canzonas, also Pasquini, in in his fugues or canzone fugues, or sonatas in partimento notation. So partimento is was a notation to improve the sense of improvise improvisation and also to keyboard of co keyboard composition composition at the keyboard and uh, because uh, now for example Giorgio Pacchioni tells me always that uh, we exaggerate uh, the importance of improvisation that partimentos were used of course uh, as basis of composition uh, and this is true because uh, we in conservatory, Italian conservatory of my age, I'm 47, uh, used the partimentos uh, with or without numbers, figures, uh, to compose double choirs. And this was the traditional Italian system to give uh, the, the Fenaroli partimentos realized for orchestra, for quartet, also Hitler gave examples, for two choirs, for two orchestras, for many different uh, uh, scorings. So uh, the partimento could be. Uh, Giorgio Pacchioni used my verses to compose in four parts in, in a vocal style, not for keyboard. For example, this partimento, I this canzonas. So you can use um, this is keyboard music, of course. You will see uh, these are organ lessons, organ composition lessons. Organ, but the 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 the, 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 moment, the passage between organ improvisation, keyboard improvisation to keyboard composition is sometimes. Very, very short and, 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 and delicate. Uh, mm -hmm. This music uh, was played by me. I wrote the the, 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 the realization, my realization, and I change, of course, uh, often during concerts. This is the only recording live. No, not the only. There is also also original composition, but uh, this is uh, during a, a concert last September in Pistoia on a beautiful organ built by Tronci and in part uh, historical and in part uh, modern by Ghilardi. Uh, my professor, organ professor Umberto Pineschi, let's build. And uh, during this concert, I played half part of literature, what the historical master called intavolatura, so the written literature, and half part was of my. Partimento or Esercizi per l'accompagnamento realizations, any part also original composition in, in historical style. We will see. So, uh, enjoy this, uh, this Partimento canzone. The audio is not uh, of very good quality. Is it? And the later iPhone. on, they could perhaps they could go to your YouTube channel and probably hear it in the in yes, pristine, after this in interview. Why were I, yes, okay. okay. All right, let's let's play it now.
Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay, okay, this is gonna... 